chemotherapy. Let's return to this. Let's talk about some basic principles very briefly. Um, and remember, these are things that have been used and have been unchanged essentially since the 70s. We have not found a better thing than cisplatin at this point in time, though we have a lot of good candidates and we're trying to replace it. But combinations of cisplatin, that's that thing that was approved in the 1970s, or its cousin, carboplatin, plus gemcitabine, that's the other thing that was approved you saw on the timeline, are the most common first choice for treatment of metastatic urothelial or bladder cancer. So cisplatin and gemcitabine or carboplatin and gemcitabine are the most common. Cisplatin is the best chemotherapy we have against bladder cancer. That has not changed since the 1970s, which is crazy, I guess, but is maybe opportune that we found a good chemo all the way back in the 70s and we just haven't found something better to unseat it. I would say again, there are multiple candidates on the horizon. We might be able to get rid of this chemotherapy stuff at some point in time, but for now, cisplatin is the thing that is helping us through. It is the most effective thing that we have. The choice of chemotherapy, whether it's cisplatin or its cousin carboplatin, really depends on a couple things and they're all related to the patient. How fit the patient is, how strong, how frail, how, how much vigor that person has versus how weak that person might be, that's really important. Um, and is probably the, the way that we decide between chemotherapy at all, or maybe a different pathway, that, that decision algorithm that I showed you earlier on, the way doctors think about it. How well the patient's kidneys work? Can, is their creatinine number still at a low level? That helps us choose between cisplatin, which needs really high functioning kidneys that are healthy and happy, or carboplatin, which can be given even if the kidneys are not so good. Actually, even if the kidneys are not working at all, the patient has to be on dialysis. So that's a decision point. And whether the patient has other medical problems that might be really negatively affected by cisplatin chemotherapy, whether the person has heart failure, or really bad neuropathy, maybe from diabetes, which would be numbness and tingling nerve damage in the fingers and the toes, or even in the ears. So hearing loss, because hearing is, is a nerve related function. So if there's a lot of nerve damage pre-existing, cisplatin could make that worse and we would not want to use that. So those are the main things that we think about when we're trying to choose that chemotherapy. And usually if we can, we try to give someone cisplatin or carboplatin chemotherapy with gemcitabine, if, if we can, for people who are strong enough. Um, and of course, that's not related to anything that's not a patient's fault or a person's fault. It's just, is their body gonna be strong enough to get this chemotherapy, which is, is, um, is tough, which we've already talked about, um, but is still the backbone of what we try to do for people with metastatic bladder cancer. There are lots of effects of chemotherapy. Um, chemotherapy goes in through a vein, so it's infused through a catheter in the vein or sometimes through a port up here in the chest. And it goes through the blood, it goes everywhere the blood flows, and it goes into cells of cancer cells and it just destroys them. And that's our goal, that's what we want to do. But it also goes into other cells, cells that are trying to survive by dividing and replicating themselves, like blood cells that are just turning over and making new cells all the time, or heart cells that can be damaged pretty easily, or uh, muscle cells that need to be in a healthy environment to um, stay well and to grow and to get strong. So um, chemotherapy goes into all of those cells. It's not really targeted. It's not, doesn't choose where it goes. It goes, it goes everywhere. And because it does that, it can cause low blood counts like white blood cells that protect our bodies from infection or red blood cells that carry oxygen to all of our organs and chemotherapy can damage those and make it harder for our bodies to do the normal things that they do with the blood that they normally have. It can also affect our, the cells in our mouth and the cells in the GI tract. So again, mouth to anus. And the reason that it can do that is because these cells in our mouths, in our esophagus, in our stomach, in our, in our GI tract, these are all cells that 
that replace themselves on a regular basis. They are only here around with us for a little bit of time and they replace themselves and get new ones, new versions of themselves uh, very, very quickly in terms of a body's life. And any cell that's gonna turn itself over and make a new one in a short period of time is one that's gonna be affected by chemotherapy. So people get mouth sores and they get stomach upset because those cells get irritated or they do get diarrhea potentially. Cisplatin in particular can cause neuropathy that I mentioned. So damage to the longest nerves in our body. The nerves that go down to the tips of our fingers or the tips of our toes are the ones that are damaged or, or affected by cisplatin chemotherapy. And so that can cause a numbness or a tingling. Um, it's, it's very strange, I think, to people at the beginning. They think, well, it just feels like my fingers fell asleep or my foot fell asleep. Um, and hopefully that as the body heals after chemotherapy, that should go away. But that some degree of that can be more permanent, this numbness that you can feel. And hearing is also a nerve that helps you hear. And that can be affected by cisplatin chemotherapy and cause people to have ringing in the ears or even hearing loss over time. And the most sensitive organ to cisplatin chemotherapy are the, 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 most, the most sensitive organs <laughs> to cisplatin chemotherapy are the kidneys. We get two. We're lucky about that. Um, but they get, can be really damaged by cisplatin. So really we have to recognize that cisplatin is not targeted. It's the most effective treatment that we have, but it can cause some damage. 